Welcome back everybody and today we are looking at sealing some food in mylar bags. So we have an assortment of stuff like mashed potatoes, great value mashed potatoes, great value whole grain, quick oats. We have here some elbows, two boxes of elbows, hungry jack mashed potatoes and I read the ingredients of the mashed potatoes and tried to exclude anything that has uh, animal fats in it. Some of it had butter or it was like this contains milk ingredients, but some of it specifically listed like butter and stuff. And I'm, I'm trying to stay away from that because I don't want anything to go possibly go rancid. But once again, that stuff like that, I'll probably mark on the outside of the bag saying what it is. And that way I'll know to watch out for it maybe going rancid. But anyway, anyway, besides this being somewhat of an experiment, we're going to be sealing up some one gallon and some half gallon mylar bags. A while back I did some another series of mylar bags, but I accidentally formatted the memory card of the camera and I lost all that footage. I had done up a whole bunch of pinto beans, rice, stuff like that. So this is my third go around with sealing food in mylar bags and we'll just see how it goes. This is pinto beans and this was done on March 31st of this year. Pulled in real nice. And like I said, whenever I did these this series, I accidentally formatted the memory card and all those videos were lost. So we're going to be working on some more today. I'd like to throw a special thank you out to Safe Castle at prepared.pro for getting me into the Mylar bag storage. And what I've got here there's some Ziploc Mylar bags with a flat bottom and these have got like a seal at the top so that I can seal it with an iron then whenever I open it I can reseal it. Now these are a few cents more the ones than the ones without the Mylar uh, Ziploc seal like these. These don't have the seal so whenever you cut it to open it up to get the contents out that's it. It's opened up. You'd have to fold it over and put like a chip clip or something on it after you get your stuff out. So I went ahead and ordered some of these with the Ziploc seal so that I'll be able to cut the part that's sealed with an iron, open it up, pull the beans, rice, grains, whatever I want out of it, then seal it back to keep the bugs out of it. We're using 1000 cc oxygen absorbers. Now this may be a little overkill for what we're doing. But I didn't want to have to buy one size oxygen absorber for the one gallon bags and then for the half gallon bags. I wanted to buy one that was big enough for the one thousand for the one gallon bags. Just go with it like that. I didn't want to have to mix and match and then run out of one size oxygen absorber but still have some bags left over. So I bought 1000 cc to cover everything. I, I filled up three. I just filled up three of these half gallon Ziploc Mylar bags and it worked out well that I'm just going to squeeze the air. I made to get some out of that and put it in this third one down here. But two of these great value 100% whole grain old fashioned oats went into three half gallon Mylar bags. So that worked out well. So the next time I, I, I'm going to do next time I do this I'll buy, say, four of these whole grain oak canisters and then do like six of these Mylar bags. So two of these equals three half gallon bags. Well, I'm pouring this rice out and what do I see? I see a weevil right there. I know I shouldn't be touching this with my bare hands, but I just washed them. Where's he at? There he is. Right there. Fresh bag of rice. Scooping it out with the measurer. Trying to keep an idea of how many cups for in each bag. I think it's like four cups. But anyway, anyway, 
pouring it out and there's a weevil in it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put an oxygen absorber in there and seal it up. See what happens. I'm averaging about, even though three, four, what is it, four cups equals a gallon. I'm averaging about three cups per gallon bag because I want to leave a little. What? Yeah, I know. Okay. I know. It's four cups. Mm -hmm. This is this equals four cups. Right. But you're only putting about yeah. three. Yeah, I'm only putting three cups. A little bit more because I want to leave a little space at the top. So what would that be? Like 12 cups? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like 12 cups per... You know, I'll probably put the rest in there. But anyway, here's one that I've already got filled up as far as I want to go. And I want to leave some room where I can pinch it like that. Kind of push the air out. Seal it with a Ziploc and then iron it together. So I'm not filling them all the way up. There's probably about a three inch gap from the Ziploc down to the top of the rice. So I can pinch it and, see, and push the air out. These are 1,000 cc oxygen absorbers. There's a, they're a little big for what I need. Like I said, I didn't want to buy one size oxygen absorbers for the half gallon, then another size oxygen absorbers for the one gallon. So I just bought a flat 1,000 cc oxygen absorber. There's supposed to be 20 of them in here. I'm going to set this up and just drop them down in there. Kind of push them down into the mix. And what we're doing is we've got the oxygen absorber inside the oats. We're just going to use the Ziploc to seal it, push the air out, put, put it over here. The iron's almost, it's heating up right now, it should be ready to go. Push the air out. Pinto beans. More. Um, Elbow. Elbows. That's right. Just noodles. That's one bag of noodles. Kind of try to get the air out of there. So, um, mashed potatoes. It's a bag of quick oats. We've got the Ziploc sealed. Gonna put it on this aluminum level with the iron. Hopefully this will... be alright. What this is, this is two bags four pounds of pinto beans between the big one and the small one. This is like three quarters of, say, a pound and a half. This over here is the remaining. 